And uh, first off, we just want to use the opportunity to usher in God's presence into today's service by praying and thanking him concerning everything about today's service. So I would like each and every one of us to stand up in an attitude of reverence, in an attitude of worship to God. Uh, firstly, we want to pray a prayer of thanksgiving to God. And the reference text is Psalm 69, verse 30, which says, I'll praise the name of God with song and magnify him with thanksgiving. We want to thank him for the success of yesterday's um, empowerment program for everyone who was here yesterday. I'm sure we were all blessed. And our prayer point goes thus. Let's say, Father, we thank you for the success of the wheel program and the great testimonies that are bound. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to thank him for the wheel program, for the great testimonies that will come up from this program. Let's just appreciate his name for the success of every single piece of the program, for every activity that went on yesterday. Let's just say thank you to him. Let's just say thank you to God. Father, we want to say thank you. Father, we appreciate your name for the success of yesterday's program. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we've thanked him. We also want to pray concerning the Let's Go Fishing coming up next week. And our reference text is 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, which says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers and we have to go forth towards them to shine the light of God that will open their eyes. And our prayer point is, Father, in the name of Jesus, unveil the heart of all during the Let's Go Fishing and let great multitudes accept the glorious gospel of Christ. In your own way, begin to pray to God, to ask God that he reveals himself during the Let's Go Fishing session. That as many of us that will go and preach the word of God, that it will not be by our own words, it will not be by the human flesh, but the Spirit of God himself will speak through us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit of God will speak through us himself in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you go ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Lastly, we want to pray concerning today's service. We just want to ask God to take control of every single activity from the choir administration down to the announcements. We're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus and by the help of the Holy Spirit, and powers through your word today. Empowers through your word. Let light bust out in every dark areas of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray, Father. Please empower us by your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Empower us by your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light bust forth in our lives by this word. The title for the first service is Building Your Brand. Let your light burst forth in our lives by this word in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just want to say thank you for today. We want to say thank you for another moment in your presence. Father, we commit every aspect of today's service into your hands. And we ask that you plant your seed into our lives. We pray that that seed grows and brings forth much fruit in multiples of hundreds, sixties, and thirties in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit every aspect of today's service into your hands. We ask that lives be saved, lives be transformed. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord. And at the end of the Today, let your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's jam our hands for Jesus. Jam a, we are light drivers. Let's jam our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. We light drivers have come to give thanks to Jesus this morning. I want you to be in the attitude of worship. 
want you to bow down your ass to Jesus. Tell him what you want. Tell him sweet words. Tell him what you want from him today. It's a career day today. And we all know that we are students. Most of us are students. And we know what we want from God. Let's begin to speak to Jesus from our hearts this morning. Lord, we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Accept our thanks and praise. We are youths, Lord. Accept our thanks and praise this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are. I'm a Shia.
about to give God some praise. Come on, put on your dancing shoes and join us. Are we ready? Everybody praise him. Everybody praise him. Everybody praise him. 
ne go finish for my mouth. The goodness and mercy they follow for my mouth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can I from my tongue? I really ne go finish. I really ne go finish. You ne go finish for my mouth. Thank you for your grace, Lord. We worship you. 
we adore you. We praise your holy name, Father. Receive all honor, glory, and power forevermore in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful ministration. Thank you so much. Please, let's clap for them. <laughs> Good morning, church. How are we? <laughs> Everyone is looking so stunning. Please look at your neighbor. Say you are looking nice. Ah, I'm seeing different careers today. Some of you will come and tell me where your career is now. Okay, so this morning we have a very short film for the church. And I watched this video over a week ago. Every single day I watch it, I get new definitions, new meaning. It's a very short film, and I need everyone to please pay attention. May God bless you. And I'm going to ask for feedback after the video, so please listen very well. Carry your name, your paper and pen. God bless you. Media? Question. What are you called to do? I ask that question because we won't be judged according to what we did in life but rather what we were called to do in life. Imagine with me standing before the throne of God and a scenario like this occurred. Evangelist Anderson, come forth and give an account of your stewardship on earth. E evangelist Anderson, I, I'm not an evangelist. I, I, I'm an accountant. I, 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 I had an accounting firm, I had an evangelist Anderson. Where are the 347,566 souls I called you to impact in Asia, son? Where are they? I, I, I'm an accountant, I, I had an accounting firm. I, I, I help churches, I help ministries with their, their, their finances, son. I, where are the 347,566 souls in Asia I called you to impact? Son, where are they? Had you sought me, had you sought my face, I would have revealed this to you. Accountant Jones, step four and give an account of your stewardship. Uh, accountant Jones? Jones? No, I, no, I'm not. I passed him for 35 Jones. years. I, I, I had a, a membership of 750 people. Accountant Jones, I called you to the marketplace. Had you done this, you would have significantly impacted two people. You and those two men would have helped churches with their finances, and those churches would have impacted 751,000 321 souls. If you would have sought me, I, I would have revealed this to you. Sister Smith, come forth and give an account of your stewardship. three children I I never preached to, to nations I I never even been on a, a missionary trip I, I only tried my hardest to raise my children in your way sister Smith I never called you to preach to nations. I never called you to go to other countries on missionary trips. I called you to raise three children. And let me show you the 1,579,541 souls those three children impacted. Good and faithful servant. 
enter into the joy of your Lord. So remember, in regards to the calling that's on your life, you won't be judged according to what you did. You will be judged according to what you were called to do. Hallelujah. Uh, you people have changed your face. <laughs> okay, can just one or two people just tell me what they learned from that video? Anything? I'll come down low. Okay. okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What the video thing told us is that we should take cognizance of every assignment that God has given us in the Bible. Most especially Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, to go out to the outermost parts of the world and preach the gospel. We will not be judged by what we did, but what we are called to do that we did not hack into. Thank you so much. That was what I was supposed to say. For <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think from the video, I can get that there is a specific assignment and there is a general assignment. The general assignment is about preaching the gospel onto the uttermost part of the earth, but there is a specific assignment that God gives you because there is a need that you vacuum that he wants you to fill. Thank you so much. I mean, that video, it's okay. One more person, sure. Hallelujah. In as much as in as much as uh, the the message was very clear, I think there are certain points that like in addition to what Pastor uh, White said, you see, there are some Bible that anything you do it, do it, do it unto the glory of the Lord. There's some yes, we have a specific task and assignment, but that doesn't mean that if you fulfill your, a certain thing to, that glorifies God, that draws men to God, you are condemned. Because I, I, I noticed that the message was, was, not, was tilted towards a particular area. It was not holistic in the sense that it was like if you don't do the specific task, you are condemned. And you're, so that, that's the area I'm pointing out because some, certain persons, Bible says that this gospel is preached, some are called, some are not called, but at the end of the day, the gospel is preached and souls are saved, and there's no way God will forget your good works that glorifies his name. Thank you. Well, last person. Thank you. Um, it's just to add that never assume what your call is. Seek the face of the Lord to know specifically what God has called you to do. Secondly, do not compare your assignment to another man's assignment. Mm -hmm. Don't feel that your assignment is small. Like that woman that was called to raise three children in her mind, she felt like she couldn't go to the mission field, even if you don't go to the mission field, but doing that specific thing, seeking God's face to know exactly, don't assume, don't jump into conclusion, learn to hear. It might take a while, but learn to know exactly, and as you continue, you reveal it more and more to you, and don't compare your assignment to another man, because everyone has got his own assignment. God bless. Thank you so much. That was all lovely. The four people that answered, you've said everything that is on my notes, so I'll just go from there. Just like everyone has said, don't compare your assignments to another person's own. I think most people think that uh, we have a particular timeline in our lives. Oh, I'll graduate school. Then after school, I'll get a job, I'll get married. This, that, this. You cannot be following that timeline. That's not, that's not the same thing God has for you. And probably it may be like, if you have asked God, if you have aligned your own plan with God, then that's fine. But you cannot be following your own path or fulfilling what God has told you to do based on another person's path. And short summary would just be that um, Revelation 20, 12 to 15 is that we will be judged based on our works. We wonder why, when people ask this question, why will a philanthropist not make heaven? Because he has done very good things on this earth. Fine, that's okay. There's a criteria, we all know that. Give your life to Christ. 
That's the most important one. The other one is follow God's plan for your life. Listen, the problem is many people don't listen to God's calling upon their lives. And it's, it's, not, it's not just what you did on earth. I don't know if that makes sense. What you did is just part of it. It's like submitting an assignment of five questions that you only submit to. So it's very important to listen to God's calling upon our lives and never belittle God's calling. That mother, oh my God, I don't think we should call mother like that again. You should not say just mother again because she raised three people, not even people, leaders. Millions of people entered the kingdom of God through those three people, through the time the mother took to raise her children. She reminds me so much of Mary in the Bible. She brought the savior of the world. Without Mary, ah, he, this world is already hard. <laughs> if you don't have savior, ha. Ah. <laughs> so just please listen to God. Pray. And for those that don't know what their calling is, 2 Corinthians 3.18. I'm just going to say it like this. We behold until we are formed. So... Thank you. <laughs> but in, what does beholding mean? Being present in God's, being constant in God's presence. The whole plan of Light Tribe, one of it is just raising youth. This generation, we need people that are hungry for God. If you are seeing what is going on, we need people that are hungry for God. We need people to lead the next generation. And we cannot just choose anyone. There are a lot of people spreading bad news about God and even saying the fake things of God. So we need genuine people, people that are ready to serve, people that are ready to lead. And you cannot do that by just waking up, oh, God chose me. I must go out. I must carry my Bible, pinnacle, pinnacle. But we have to stay. <laughs> we have to stay in God's word, come to church fellowship on your own. Church is not the building. Church is the people. We are all wanting to grow in God's word. So please remain in God and listen to him for your calling. God bless you. Hallelujah. Were we blessed by that video? Yeah, I hope that God will speak to us like through the video that's been played and would not miss our assignments, would fulfill God's purposes for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're about to take the announcement. Um, media team, please. Thank you for announcements. Our reoccurring church programs are as follows. Please be reminded that our house fellowship holds every Sunday except the first Sunday of the month. If you are yet to register, Kindly scan the QR code displayed on your screen so you can be allocated to the closest center to you. Our weekly prayer meeting holds every Monday by 7 p.m. in the church auditorium. Everyone is welcome to attend. Every Tuesday, we have our midweek service, also known as our words and communion service. This holds by 6.30 p.m. in the church auditorium and pre-service prayers start at 6 p.m. Our daily online prayers hold on Zoom by 5.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 8.30 p.m., except Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday evenings. The venue is the Church Zoom platform. Please take note of the Church Zoom details displayed on your screen. We encourage you to attend and invite someone. Counseling and Prayer Session Please book your counseling and prayer session with Pastor Dapol using the QR code displayed on your screen. Saturday School, also known as Sunday School, holds on Zoom by 8 p.m. every Saturday for in-depth teaching of God's words that may not be taught on Sundays and Tuesdays. You will be blessed as you attend. If you would like to share your testimony, kindly send it to testimonies at jesushousestory.org. Please note that the church will never call you to ask for a code or a number. Please be advised to be careful and be security conscious so that you don't fall victim. If you've not activated your two-factor authentication, kindly do so as soon as possible. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of The Church Announcements. God bless you.
Amen. I hope we take note of the announcements that have been displayed already. So I'll just read the other ones that are reoccurring as well. So daily Bible study. As a church, we study the word of God two chapters a day. Ensure you join the God chasers through his written word. We are studying the book of Romans. We are now in the book of Romans, and tomorrow is Galatians 5 and 6. So let's ensure we do that as well. Then we have a book study, an old book. We are still having a book study on the eighth secret of the snowy day. We encourage everyone to participate and be blessed. I think last Tuesday was like a review and it was powerful. You can catch up on that on the YouTube channel. Please get a copy of the book from the ushers if you need. You should need, actually, <laughs> so get one. Yeah, so the special programs, we have our prayer meeting that holds on Mondays. This Monday, we'll be having the prayer meeting for the families and a special walk around Tory. Time is 7 p.m. Venue is a church auditorium meeting here then before we go out. Ensure you encourage others to attend. The prayer chain, we have a prayer chain for the Let's Go Fishing. I think we can see the flyer on there. So prayer chain remains from 6 a.m. to 6.30 daily on church Zoom. Please let's ensure we attend and engage in these prayers. Then we also have the Aberdeen Invasion 2024. So I think the theme is Destiny Recovery Prayer Conference hosted by Pastor Faith Orike. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Theme is Restore and Recover All. Holds on the 30th of March by 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the church auditorium. It is prayers for children with autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, and any form of mental illness will be prayed for. Please come expectant and ensure you invite a friend, invite someone will be blessed by this program. Then next week Sunday is our Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's the resurrection season. As, an, as a church, we are celebrating Christ's resurrection. So come with an attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude to God for his death and resurrection. That's what we're celebrating and that's why we're here. And God would bless us and even resurrect us in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final announcement is the Music Festival 2024. The Knots See Gospel Festival 2024 themed Aberdeen shall flourish again holds on the 31st of March 2024 by 2 p.m. at Castle Gate Salvatory, Salvation Army. We are invited and encouraged to attend this event. We will all meet at the venue after service next Sunday. Please let's ensure we attend this event that has been announced. That was long. Thank God. <laughs> So let's package our offerings and our tithes. If you're a tither today, please can you just rise? Time for our offerings and tithes. If you're not giving your tithe this morning, please package your offering. The media displayed already the ways you can give. So just use your own means and give your offering. Before then, we'll just read 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And it says, you must each decide in your heart as much as you want to give. And do not give reluctantly in response to pressure. For God loves a cheerful giver. So Titus in the house, please, can you rise to your feet as we pray and agree with you? Anyone? No one? Okay. Let's, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this ones who have obeyed your command. Thank you, O oh God, for even enabling them to obey this command. Lord, we pray that you bless and increase them in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that you rebuke devourers for their sake in the name of Jesus. And the remaining that they have, they will make use of it for your purpose in the name of Jesus. We pray they will not use it for anything that is outside of your will in the name of Jesus. We pray that you bless and increase them, prosper them in the name of Jesus. And they will even have more and more and more to give, even way beyond the 10% that we are meant to give. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen. So just be praying over the offerings. Let's ensure we give cheerfully and not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver, like the scripture has said. Uh, Father and our God, we thank you for everyone who's bringing their offering before you. Lord, we ask that you accept and receive our sacrifice in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bless and increase us in the name of Jesus. For as many who don't have to give this morning, I ask, oh God, that you give unto them even more, that they'll be able to give even next time in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your blessing over us. Thank you because you multiply us even more, even as we obey your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen. God bless us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, For as many who hunger and thirst for him, 
He says he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Within a minute, can we just raise our voices to our Father? Speak in tongues, speak in tongues. We are not just gathered like mere men. We are not just gathered like mere men. We have come. We have come to the member of the garden of innumerable numbers of angels. We are not just gathered like mere men. We have come. We have come to the garden of innumerable numbers of Manana Masiana, only ways long preserved for our world in this world. They resound in God's own heart. Oh, Ancient words in sing with me. Ancient words. Ancient words. Come on, you can do better. You can do better. Halamade siyana ya. Ranane piyana ya. Oh, raise your voice. We have come. Oh, we have come. Halamade siyana ya.
Holy Ghost, we want to behold you until we are formed. We want to see your face until we are formed. Eka paya bela boba biados, sheke tile bando kapiniados. We want to see your face until we are formed. Oh, shaya bakopola. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of time, we're going to pray this prayer. Still in the atmosphere of encounter. Exodus 25 verse 9. Exodus 25 verse 9. The Bible says, According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all is furnishing just so you shall make it god is more is more detailed about your life more than you are this morning i want us to pray lord show me what i've been called to i will not let you go until you show me i may be a successful footballer but you have called me into welfare I may be a successful preacher, but you have called me into hospitality. Brethren, don't look at your bank accounts. Somebody pray, pray, pray. Oh, somebody pray, pray, pray. Don't stop praying. I didn't ask you to stop praying. Oh, there's a prophecy over your life. Oh, there is prophecy over me. I must not fail this one. I must not fail my Lord. I must fulfill his word. There is prophecy over me. Oh, I must not fail this one. Oh, I must not fail my Lord. Somebody pray that your eyes will be open to the prophecy over your life. There's a word over your life. The Bible says that before you were formed, I knew thee. God has a word for your life. He has a word for your destiny. Somebody pray. Oh Lord, open my eyes. Jacob Alabos. I must not fail you, Lord. I must fulfill this cause. Somebody, there's a prophecy. Not given by your father or mother. Not given by your education. Not given by your exposure. But given by the Spirit of the living God. Somebody, let the Lord show you. According, there's a pattern. There's a pattern. Somebody pray, pray, pray. Your life is too short to miss it. Your life is too short to miss it. Oh, Jesus, show me, show me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Because of time, you may please be seated. Because we need to close. So we have to shorten everything. 
including the message time. But I need you to know that there's something that is about to shift in your life. You need to be sensitive. For a second, just put on pause whatever you are doing. Like, put on pause what your life seems to be about. Yes, I know I've, you know, crafted my business. I'm already doing well. Just ask the Lord, invade my space. Invade my space. And I give you a permission to just invade me. The Bible says in the book of Luke 19 verse 13. Can we quickly read? Today we are talking about how to build a personal brand. And somebody is asking, how does that relate to the being called? You would understand. The Bible says, so he called the servant. Two seconds, please. He called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. I think Jesus was in Britain when he was writing this scripture. Minas, in my Bible, say pounds. And said to them, what did he say? Two bits. Can we read it together, please? Can you give me KJV, not new KJV? KJV, please. Can we read it together? And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, oh, can we scream it? Occupy it like God. Tell your neighbor, you need to occupy you need to fill the space that God has dug for you. There's a space for you. There's a space for you. Tell your neighbor there's a space for you. Every believer has a pound given to them before the foundations of the world. Every human is demanded to find that sweet spot of your existence. May we never live to get old only to realize we live doing another man's assignment. The question that must be answered in this service today by yourself is that am I truly occupying the earth in anticipation of the return of my Lord? Because the Bible let us know further down that the master would come back to make inquiry of your return of, on his investments. There's a key performance indicator. There's a metric that God will check. You know, in product management for tech bros, there's something they call the North Star metric. The North Star metric is the most critical metric a product manager checks to know if the product is doing well. God is telling you, I have the North Star metric. I know what I'm going to judge you by. Not by the millions in your bank account. Not about your eloquence when you preach. No, but not about how slay you can slay with your suit or with your eye heels. I have the North Star metric. I know what I called you into. Your job is to be humble to decode it. Somebody say you must decode it. Can we project something? Pastor Mrs., thank you, Pastor, for giving us this opportunity. She said something to, to the video. Please, can you project the first slide? The evangelism team has taught us over the weeks. The first slide, quickly. That there's a general purpose and there's a specific purpose. We must know. Can we quickly, quickly, because my time is running. The first slide. Hallelujah. No, no, no. The first slide, not the title. We saw this. How many of us have seen this? I mean, for the past week, we've been hammering on evangelism. We can see the trend of the gospel is reducing. The next slide, quickly. Quickly. Can we see that in three decades, the reduction in the number of Christianity is 10%. In 1990, it was 84. In 2000, it's 72. That's about 10%, right? In 2011, is what? 60. Another 10%. Now, look at between 2021 and 2023. How many percent? 10%. For mathematics, what that means is that you are doing 10% in 10 years, but within these last two years, you have done 10% in two years. What does that mean? In the next, in the year 2031, how many percent will it be? Mathematics students. Meaning that by the time we are in 2023, if you don't occupy doing the business of the Lord, we may not have Christianity. So number one, in case you are looking for your nostalgia metric, let me tell you, number one, 
you must preach the gospel. That's number one, not star metric for God. Your life must be an embodiment of evangelism. But now, no, somebody said, oh, when we say this, uh, there's, everybody say, God forbid, right? But God told me, let's stop God forbidding. Let's start going for the bid. The bid is to do his job. Through your WhatsApp status, through your Snapchats, through your dressing, through your relationship on and off stage. You can't be a powerful ministry, minister of God on stage. And on the, when there's no mic, you are very cocky and rude. That's not the bid of God. I don't care how many souls you can win or you can raise dead. If your life of the mic is opposite of what you de your demeanor is, then you are you're not occupying. You can't smile on stage, you are ministering because you want good feedback. But off stage, you are, you know, you can preach 100 messages. If in the corner of your room, your life is not preaching, you are wasting time. Don't anybody are wasting time. Now, the reason, what, what we must know is that Christianity is losing its grip from these statistics. Now, if you check the previous slide, why Christianity is dwindling down? What is happening to other religion? Increasing. Guess what? These people don't, are not radical about their evangelism. They don't go out on Saturdays. They don't go out on Sundays. They don't even preach. You know what they do? They indoctrinate you without you knowing. I don't want to call the religion. They promote self and personal encounters over congregational encounters. They promote community impacts over congregational impacts. They don't gather on Sunday mornings. Even on Fridays when they gather, you don't know them. You don't even know their buildings. But they go into their spheres. They build systems that survive beyond themselves. They excel in their workplace. They own the marketplace excellence. They don't pray when they ought to walk. And they don't walk when they ought to pray. They don't leave everything to speaking in tongues. They go into the world and preach their gospel with excellence and results. Check the top companies reigning today. You will hardly see Christians at the top. But you see these people. How they do it, we don't know. They don't go about and uh, give your life to Jesus. They preach their, their res... They are dogged with their career. Listen. They are resilient with their vision. They demand their right. They don't settle for later. They are not chickened out by opposition. They demand for their right. But we, it is where? It's the will of God. Who told us is the will of God? When you can confront things with your excellence. They prioritize wealth over immediate riches. My concern today is that we ought to be concerned because of our future. If the predominant religion is not Christianity, as a result of us missing our assignment of evangelism in the marketplace, that is, if Christianity is not an option, then our faith becomes unnecessary. Christianity can never be an option. It should never get to a point where our brand as a Christian becomes an option. It must be a necessity. You are raising children. You are going to fall in love someday, Gen Z, and you are going to give birth. If Christianity is an option today, it might be worse for your own descendants. And that's why we must be radical about it. But now, now that I've talked about the problem, what is the solution? Number one, evangelism. Number two, slide you need to, you need to be checking. Number two is you must dominate the commercial space and secular space. You must dominate. That's the solution. It's not about praying one million hours. It's about dominating. Tell your neighbor, it's time to dominate. It's time to kick the box. It's time to break down the wall and dominate with your career. The Bible said in Genesis 18 verse 19, quickly, that 
Genesis 18 verse 19, that I trust Abraham that he will teach his children after me. Genesis 18. I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after me. Listen to me. God was talking about Abraham that was fatherless. So who are his children? His laborers. His colleagues. So God is not saying this about childbearing. He's saying that you must teach you must dominate the circular space so much that people will come to the knowledge of your God. Let's stop allowing these people tell us that Christianity is for blacks and people who need money. They brought the gospel to us. So if some in between the line, they miss this thing, our job is to take it back to them. We we're talking about Christian apologetics yesterday. You must be a Christian apologetic in your career space. Believer must be aware of the prophecy over the life. God, the sender, is aware. The devil, your opposer, is aware. Why are you oblivious of it? The devil is so aware of your call that he makes sure that you fall in sin so that you don't arise to it. There's a volume of book written about you. We need a paradigm shift. We believers have to go for the gold. Believers need to see their job as a main tool for evangelism. That's why yesterday's empowerment program was critical. It's not about you just getting that job. It's about being empowered to the way up so that you can control the way down. The reason why there's shift on Sunday morning is because there's no believer running the the commercial space. If all the believers are so empowered and we say no church, no work on Sunday, so shall it be. But because every day believers are not dominating the secular space, then non believers would not value your Sunday mornings. Praise the Lord. To dominate your secular space, you must develop your personal brand. Can you now see where I'm tying it now? To dominate your personal space, tell your neighbor, you must develop your personal brand. So how do you build your brand? Number one, there's a slide for this. What is branding? For your business or for your personal? Branding, can we read together? Is the process of creating, can we read together please? Is a create of creating strong, positive perception of your person or company and its product in the mind of your audience. Go to the next slide. There are some words you should call out for. Can you see now? Can you read those words? There are four P's in the definition of the word branding. Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four is put. I'm going to explain all of these words. By the way, it's not my word. It's Google. But what I'm about to explain is not Google. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Number one, process. It means that to create that brand to dominate your world, it takes time. So be patient. Time. Be patient. Don't rush to blow. When you blow, you scatter. God is raising people that will grow up. No, we blow up. Because when you blow up, the platform becomes so much for you, it becomes a pitfall. When you grow up, when you blow up without being prepared, without being cooked, then you will fall prey of the things the Philistines are dealing with. That's why we have believers in entertainment industry who are not cooked, they fall prey. Believers in government who will embezzle because they were not cooked. Process. Number two, positive. That means you are intentional to downplay your weakness. During this presentation, I was telling my wife, you need to start praying for some set of it. You know, she was doing, oh. I said, oh. I, I ate shame down. You are both dead, you. Five years ago, you were saying, ah, I'm shy. You cannot be shy. Look up now, babe. <laughs> if God has called you about leading a prayer team, then start it. So if I can talk to my wife, then not, you can't, I won't apologize to you. She will still give me food. In fact, she has cooked it and microwave it myself. <laughs> but guys, time is of the essence. I don't know about you, but my wife knows 
that every day I wake up and I feel a bad pang. I feel unfulfilled. This is the UK I've been praying to God for that if I come, eh, there's light 247, there's data, everything is good. I will do all I have been called to do. Yet I'm still making excuses based on the fact that I am projecting my weaknesses. I am magnifying my weakness. Tell your neighbor, stop projecting your weaknesses. Be positive. Know what God has called you to do. A lot of us have things hidden that are dying. Why? Because we are negative about our gift. That the next because of time. Perception. That means your target audience is the boss. Remove yourself from this purpose. Listen to me. My wife taught me some weeks ago that purpose is about you, but it is beyond you. See why I said that? You are not young. You need to start doing your things. All of the things I'm doing, now for me, I'm just very expressive. She's very loaded. Praise the Lord, somebody. She told me, purpose is about you, but beyond you. That's perception. There's a target audience God has called us to do. And that's why you cannot be more important about the people God has called you to do. A lot of us sit down, killing our one pound, not repro... Um, you get my point. No, you get my boy. It's my second language. Hey. Not reproducing the one pound because you think it's about you. So it's only when you feel like doing it that you do it. Come off. Come off it. You don't sing when you feel like singing. You sing and we, you do it and your feelings will catch up. I was telling one young lady when we were dating. I said, no, when I was, I said, gee, me, I'm already dating you. When you are ready, you join me. Meaning that I spoke into the future. I don't waste time. My, how did I get here? My point is, guys, your target audience is more important than you. Don't go with your feelings. Your feelings are fickle. Your feelings are cheap. Go with the assignment. Occupy it till it comes. How did the time just go from 13 to 5? Something was wrong, no. Something is wrong. Please check it. Products. Meaning your value proposition over price projection. Listen to me. Your brand is basically your an inaudible voice in your inaccessible presence. Say, I'll say that again. Brand, your brand is your inaudible voice in your inaccessible presence. That means when you are not there. How do you build your brand? Number two. No, two ways to build your brand. Number one, brand identification and segmentation slide quickly brand i need to run now i need to run now brand i and that's why as youth you cannot afford not to be coming for the first Thursday of the month something is first Thursday of the month we have been announcing move your shift around it move your shift around it so that we, when we are rushing for time at that meetings it's not even me that preach there other young people on fire for god and if you want to take it a step further, there's a video we do, Bible study video, in somebody's house. If you want to know, find out from uh, uh, informer and treasure. Somebody does Bible study video for three hours, digging on the wall. You confirm the address for her. So brand identification and segmentation, I need to run now, holy ghost, holy ghost. A, what is brand identification and segmentation? It's a deliberate determination of that which you want to be known for. That means you are niching yourself. You can't be everything. Popularity is not the goal, but prosperity and specific, specificity. It's because I'm rushing. So you need to identify your brand. What do you want to be known for? You will be shocked. Because I've been doing this for years. You'll be shocked that people don't know what they want to be known for in the next five years. I've had conversations with people who pay for sessions like this where I help them. And they will write out the things they like to do. And I'll ask them, what do you want to be known for? It's opposite of what they wrote. It's not Jesus. I need to check everybody. You'll be shocked that as, I, as you listen to me, you don't know what you want to be known for. You've not identified your brand. You've not segmented. I know I've not been called to everybody. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I'm friendly to everybody, but I know that you're not all my friends. What I owe you is peace. 
I don't owe you, you don't owe me your friendship or love. Me, I owe you my love. Even, like, even in this church, you can't be friends with, you have not been sent to everybody. So when people don't, are not vibing with you, don't be offended. Find your niche. It's not cliche, it's not click. You have not been sent to everybody. Imagine somebody, somebody trying to sell to me wedding, wedding accessories. I've been married over six years now. I will not buy it. Not because I hate you, but because I'm not looking at married two wives. So stop projecting your brand to people who are not willing, they are not your target audience. So brand segmentation. The tip for brand identification is you must write it down. Make it plain. Have a cup two, two. Know what comes to you naturally. What makes you lose track of time? Those are tips. What imit what 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 irritates you and activates your hero button? Those are ways you identify your brand. Under the demograph you have been sent to, can you break down your target audience, their consumer insights, and their, your brand role and benefit to them? When you ask all of these questions, obviously because of time, I need to run now. You will understand that you will be able to trick out, tick out what God has called you to do. Know what God has called you. Number two, how to build your brand is you must master value projection over price focus. Money flows where value grows. What do I mean? A lot of us project our price, what we want out of something. Where God is saying, project your value. An example was Esther. Esther had a request in Esther chapter 5, before the king. But she did not go straight to say, kill a man. She said, can I make a table before you? She gave two treats to the king. One, be king and not to ask for what you want. But some of us, when we get to the place where we are to project our brand, you are trying to talk, oh, I want to earn one million dollars. What do you have to offer to this company? Your value over your price. When I was running a business in Nigeria, the price point is the least. Is the value because every target audience is skewed towards getting what's the need for me. Whatever you want to sell, you want to sell a church program. Before you tell them what they need to do, tell them what's the need for them. You get eternal life. If I need Brother Sam to drop me after service now to somewhere, I will not say Brother Sam, hey, they enjoy drop me. No, I say Brother Sam, have, did you enjoy the service today? Do you want to hear more in a quick five minutes drive up on <laughs> that's value proposition because everybody moves around things when they see what's in it for them that's how to grow a church that's how to grow any business that's how to grow any relationship i told the lady young lady i said come on now if you trade your father's name with my name i'm going to give you an essence i'm going to add value and eat and, and in in no matter what you value. You know, I quoted a scripture, silver and gold I have none, but what I give to you, rise up and walk. Come on now. What that means is that, brethren, listen, when you know your value, people will respond to you. Okay, because of time, my time is up now. My, my time is up. You don't want to miss Tuesday service. We'll be rounding up on the book. And guess what? The topic Dick Intunde gave me to teach on Tuesday is purpose. It, it was not, it was a, it was, it was God incidents. So, since we can't compete here, you need to come on Tuesday. Amen. So, master your value projection. Look at Jacob. His son had no choice to sell his birthright. You know why? No matter how the porridge was, no matter how hungry Esau was, if the porridge was looking like maggot, it would, the, the, the hunger will vanish. There's something you must cook that people will want to place their bet right on them. There's a book inside of you. There's a song inside of you, choir. There's a sound inside of you, brother, that people will stake their life. We must buy that sound. You can't just be playing keyboard. There must be a sound you create. And you say, oh, let's use this for advertisement. Let's use this to carry an emotion. Is Jacob cooked a porridge that was irresistible. What are you cooking, ask your neighbor? What are you cooking? Ask your neighbor, what are you cooking? That people will stake their birthright on it. If I'm a fashion designer, I am cooking my style. 
and people will pay everything to buy my suit. If I'm a photographer, I am cooking my ad. Hey, if I'm a gym fitness, I am cooking something so that when you want to lose your weight, you pay a price. Come on now. Somebody say, what are you cooking? There's still a message. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of message. I need to go now. I was going to teach you how do you create value. But because of time, can we rise up and say, Lord, help me. Show me my pattern. Can we pray, pray, pray? I have less than two minutes. Ah, Lord, show me my pattern. I've been told that I must occupy till I come. There's prophecy over me. I cannot fail this world. I cannot fail you, Lord. I must fulfill your cause. There is prophecy over me. I must not fail. I must not fail, my Lord. I wish choir can help me raise the song. I must fulfill your word. Somebody pray. There is something written over you. Tell the Lord, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open my eyes to identify my brand so that I can dominate my social space. So I can dominate everything. Somebody pray, 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 pray. Shake a kapafa. Shake a telebodobos. In the name of Jesus. The first way to know what you have been called to is to seek the caller. Without Jesus, you will be playing a chess game on your life and destiny. If you know you don't have a relationship with God, all eyes closed, all head bow. Put your right hand on your chest and say, Jesus, come into my life. Let me have a relationship with you. Help me to know you so that my eyes can be open to you. Somebody pray, pray that prayer. Jesus, come into my life. That I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you pray that prayer, please ensure you see the ushers after the service. And we're going to take your details, pray with you. But one thing is sure. None of us under the sound of this voice or under the leadership of this church will miss it in life in the name of Jesus. Amen. If Jesus comes today, you will be found doing the assignment you have been called. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may please have your seats comfortably. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Thanks so much for that word. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Right, so in the spirit of what we've just heard, John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, that you should go and bring forth fruits, and your fruits should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hallelujah. So this session is, ju this session is just to have come as one cent. To encourage us, that's the scripture on the screen. So if we see there's a package there, present the value. The value there is when you go and bring forth fruits and your fruits remain, what you ask the Father, he will give to you. I believe, well, if not all of us, most of us have one standing thing that we've been asking God for. Why not tie it to this year's Let's Go Fishing and engage? Time is fast running out. We don't have time again. We see the statistics. You know, the devil is at a very high speed, but God is faster than him. But God needs you, God needs me to be on the field. The harvest truly is ripe. Media, are we ready, please? The harvest truly is ripe, but the laborers are few. The laborers are available, but they don't want to make themselves available. Because God has given us life. We are alive and well. We sleep. We wake up by his mercies. We don't pay for the air we breathe. And he has given us life for us to engage in his business. We've heard he gave a pound, one pound to this person, five pounds to the other person. Those are, you know, the skills, the abilities, the days, the lives he has given to you. What are you using it for? Are you engaging in his business? As a commission, and the Redeemed Christian Church of God, we have what's called Let's Go Fishing, and there's a command 
from our Father in the Lord, that the Geo, that we should go out at Easter and at Christmas time to go and cash the souls of men, harvest the souls of men to the kingdom. For UK's one is this week, Saturday, 30th of March. And as a church, we are going to be in Tory, and we're also going to be at the city center. A QR code is going to come up, and I believe that in the spirit of obedience, according to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, Isaiah 1, 19 says, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. This is another opportunity. That's the QR code. I would like to see hands going on their phones, please, and let's engage. Scan the QR code and book your slot. You have an option, city center or Tory, Saturday between 12 and 2 p.m., please. The harvest is ready. Will you be a willing laborer in the vineyard of God? Will you be a willing laborer in the business of your father? Would you want to make your father happy? Would you want to make your father proud? Please, I'm not seeing the phones going up. Please, can we scan the QR codes? And can this be sent to all the live groups, please? All the live groups, can this be, the link be sent to all the live groups, please? Um, so they can engage. And the, and the workers platform this morning, the open heaven for today has been sent there. It tells us we don't have a choice. It's a command from God, and it's a command from our, you know, Father in the Lord. And the God of this commission that has kept him, look at, at his age, he's still going about preaching. That God will give you life, and he will give you the grace. He will keep you in sound health. He will defend you as you engage in this mission to rescue souls from darkness to light in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's see. I'm, I'm monitoring from here the back end. So please, let's start um, engaging with the link on the screen. God bless you. Just a few seconds because we need to wrap up the service soon. So while that's going on, I would like to welcome first-timers. If you are a first-timer in the house, can I please see indication with the raise of hands, please? First-time worship with us for the very first. Hallelujah. It is your first Sunday. Could you please be on your feet? God bless you. Jesus House Story members, can we give a wonderful welcome? Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Thanks for coming. We're happy to see you. We love you. Thanks for coming. God bless you. I believe your life will not remain the same by the encounter of today's service. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. So please, um, if you could please, if you just look back, there's a very handsome young guy at the back waiting to welcome you and his team. And they've got, oh, <laughs> that was not from me. And his team. And they've got a very warm welcome for you. God bless you. God bless you. And I believe you're going to receive a miracle because you've come into his house today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So one second. Um, just, I'll just check the back end. Let's see the willing and obedient ones. God is watching you, but I'm also tracking from here. As a servant sent to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. So could you please be on our feet as we share the grace to bring service to a close. Hallelujah. God bless you. Father, we give you thanks for how far you've helped us, for your presence, for speaking to us. We give you all the glory. Father, Lord, we receive grace to obey your command to go and win souls into your kingdom, especially this weekend. And Lord, we thank you for the great harvest of souls that are going to come into your kingdom today, this weekend. And as we engage in everyday life of winning souls into your kingdom. Thank you because we know you've gone ahead of us this week. And this week is blessed in the name of Jesus. We declare that we are preserved this week in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for you and your families. For every member connected to Jesus' house story, the blood of Jesus speaks over us for exemption, for preservation, for defense from all forms of evil both by day and by night, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, because we know it is done. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Can, can we share the grace and fellowship? Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, you may please be seated. Just bear with us. You know, we are pressed for time. Just be seated. There's a video that we need to um, show us. The service has ended. You just bear with us. There's a video that um, 
just showcased what we learned yesterday. And why that is happening now. Okay, good. So, if you missed yesterday's program, this is... We are showing you because there will be other ones, you know, in the coming months. Why are you watching these snippets? Please, I've just been told now that every light tribe, please go outside immediately after this announcement. There's a content we need to record. And informative and uh, generally, I would give it a big thumbs up. It's, it's excellent. It's excellent. Probably if you don't know what to do before now, this is an opportunity for you to be enlightened. And let me, let me tell you, it is something you can't get anywhere. And it's free here. Yeah. Over 10. You have 10.5. Inspiring, educating, and um, I get answers to some of the interview questions. Because I had an interview recently, then I was asked a question which I don't know answer to give. But with this program, the way of that's giving me confidence on how to apply, then how to be confident in as students. How do I go into business? in the UK. A lot of things that I don't know about the UK and how to go about business, I got answers to them. Nine over ten, uh, because I still believe there's always room for improvement when it comes to this kind of uh, events. But I think one thing I really enjoyed most was the speaker which talked about the CV development. Another thing that was very inspiring to see um, black people from African heritage being able to inspire us because there's this narrative that says coming to UK, there are no opportunities for you. But hearing from their lived experiences and seeing how they got these opportunities and where they have gotten up to, I think that was a very inspiring thing in this particular event. came for way up um, 2024. It said in Jesus Our Story March, and it has been an amazing service or event for me. What's that for me is that I learned about um, organizing my CVs and how job recruitment portals or um, agencies carry out their employment scheme. So it has been very nice and powerful for me. Um, Pastor Mrs. Um, Tony, to, to all the speakers, to Mrs. Timmy, all of them blew my mind about how things work here in um, the UK, Scotland, and Aberdeen to be precise. Thank you. It was a wonderful What really stood out for me is the passion that people want to learn. The questions was engaging. People were asking questions that really means a lot to them. So it's important that we sustain this type of platform so that we not only meet their expectations, that we give them the confidence to go out and be what they want to become, either in career or business, and the help that they need that we provide it to them. There are opportunities for our people to be not only integrated but to be successful in Scotland, and we don't want to lose that. Scotland is looking for inclusion for people that are professionals, people that are experts. But they might not be known, they, are, they might be hidden because they don't have a platform to express themselves, to ask the right questions and to get the right direction to where they want to go. So yes, uh, as a founder of Black and Scott, I'm very happy to work with the church to make sure that we put those structures in place and we can see the best of our... Uh, our yes, I would say uh, the event uh, is very uh, mind-blowing and also a, a, a source of knowledge sharing. So I would advise the organizers you know, not to put a stop to it. It should be continued. Uh, I gained a lot, even though I'm not into business, and it's something I'm looking forward to. And also, even though I'm uh, employed, I'm also hoping that I can obviously upskill my knowledge and diversify into other things. So I think it's, it's worthwhile. Uh, thank you so much for the organizers. Kudos to you, and see you at the way of 2025. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So quickly, light drivers, please go outside. There's a um, content we want to shoot. And then there's a staycation we are planning.
Praise the living Jesus. You are welcome to church this morning, this second service. And I believe that as you have come, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Can we please rise to our feet as we get this service started? I want us to start with a heart of thanksgiving. Just go ahead and appreciate the Lord for making it possible for you to be here this morning. Lord, we give you all the praise from the thanksgiving of yesterday's program. Let's go ahead. According to Psalm 69, verse 30, Psalm 69, verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Go ahead and show thanks. Express your gratitude to God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the success of our gathering yesterday. We thank you for making it possible for us to be here this morning. We give you all the praise. Go ahead and say, Father, we thank you for the success of the Way Up program and the great testimonies that are bound. Lord God Almighty, we take them not for granted. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the great numbers, oh Lord, that came out. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that are recorded already. It is not by might, nor by power. It is not because we plan the best. Lord God Almighty, you just put your hand on that program yesterday, and it was a huge success. Thank you for all the ministers. Thank you for the participants. Thank you, Lord, for the impact that has been made in the lives of people. Thank you, Lord, for setting people on their journey to their way up. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And in the next one minute, we'll be praying for the Go Fishing program. And I'm reading from John 1, verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let's say, Father, we ask that you beam your great light upon your city. During the light, let's go fishing. Let souls be greatly converted to the kingdom of your son, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, we ask that you beam your great light upon our city. During this program coming this weekend, let souls be greatly won. In the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, let there be harvest indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, the program is tag a time of harvest. Lord, let it indeed, O oh Lord, be a time of harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as we go out, O oh Lord, let the harvest be bountiful. Let your light, O oh Lord, shine on any darkness lurking in the life of people, in cities, O oh Lord, in communities. Let your light shine greatly. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord God Almighty, let your light shine and take away every darkness and let it culminate, O oh Lord, in great conversions. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And finally, we'll be praying for this service for yourself and myself. And I read from Mark, Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Let's say, Father, Father we ask we are, that your word be accompanied with signs, wonders, and demonstrations of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and make that your prayer. Father, we ask that your word be accompanied in this service with great signs and wonders. Lord God Almighty, let there be confirmation of your word coming to us in this service. Oh Lord, evidenced by testimonies, miracles, signs, wonders, demonstration of your spirit and your power in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, I'm going to wrap up your prayer with thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you. For we know, Lord, that you have heard us this morning. Be thou exalted. Be magnified, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us this morning. As we declare this for this service open, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please look to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, welcome to church. Welcome to church. If you were not here yesterday, you missed a lot. <laughs> well, the book of Jude 1, 20 and 21 says, 
But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. This morning, I want you to lift your voice and build your most holy faith in Christ. Begin to pour words inside your spirit. Begin to declare the faith of God inside your spirit that you may stand even in the face of any challenge. Begin to speak into your spirit, man. Begin to lift up your most, most holy faith. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, come on. Speak, 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 speak it, speak it. Come on, declare it into your spirit, man. Declare it into your spirit, man. Yes, yes, yes. Declare it into your spirit. Lift your most holy spirit. Yes. I cannot hear your voice. I cannot hear your voice. I cannot hear your voice. You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. You can lift your voice. Come on. You can build your spirit, man, with the voice, with your voice, with the words of your mouth. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Build your most holy faith. Come on. Come on. Come on. That is what will keep you in the face of challenges. Come on, lift your voice and build your spirit, man. Yes, 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 yes. You can do better. Come on. Yes, Lord. You called me out upon the water. The great unknown where feet may fail. Yes, Jesus. And there I find you in the mysteries, in oceans deep. My faith will stand. You know the song. Come on. Lift your voice. Call upon him. Sing, I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, when oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am your, and you are mine.
agree with me that there is a spirit in this house and you you make sure you don't miss it position yourself that's one of the words that came yesterday this morning we are still going to be positioning ourselves we are going to be declaring with the words of our mouth the bible says the power of life is in your tongue so this morning we'll be declaring into our lives are you ready yes. are you ready yes come on
the Lord. That was a wonderful song from the choir. Choir, we thank you for that song. The Lord will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Announcements. I want the media to please help us with the reoccurring announcement during the week in Jesus' name. Media. Our reoccurring church programs are as follows. Please be reminded that our house fellowship holds every Sunday except the first Sunday of the month. If you are yet to register, kindly scan the QR code displayed on your screen so you can be allocated the closest center to you. Our weekly prayer meeting holds every Monday by 7 p.m. in the church auditorium. Everyone is welcome to attend. Every Tuesday, we have our midweek service, also known as our words and communion service. This holds by 6.30 p.m. in the church auditorium and pre-service prayers start at 6 p.m. Our daily online prayers hold on Zoom by 5.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 8.30 p.m., except Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday evenings. The venue is the Church Zoom platform. Please take note of the Church Zoom details displayed on your screen. We encourage you to attend and invite someone. Counseling and Prayer Session Please book your counseling and prayer session with Pastor Dapol using the QR code displayed on your screen. Saturday School, also known as Sunday School, hosts on Zoom by 8 p.m. every Saturday for in-depth teaching of God's words that may not be taught on Sundays and Tuesdays. You will be blessed as you attend. If you would like to share your testimony, kindly send it to testimonies at jesushousestory.org. Please note that the church will never call you to ask for a code or a number. Please be advised to be careful and be security conscious so that you don't fall victim. If you've not activated your two-factor authentication, kindly do so as soon as possible. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of the Church Announcements. God bless you. Praise the Lord. And in addition to the media, we have a daily Bible study. As a church, we are studying the Word together, two chapters of the Bible a day. We are now in the book of Romans, and tomorrow will be Galatians 5 and 6. Please endeavor to join the God chaser through his written word. As you read the Bible, may you know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Counseling and prayer section. Book your counseling and prayer section with Pastor Dapo using the QR code display. The annual Bible study. We are still having our book study on the eight secrets of the snowing day. We encourage you to participate and engage, and you will be blessed. Last Tuesday was wonderful. Please get a copy of the book from the usher. And we encourage everybody to be part of this so that we have progress and success in all our endeavors this year, 2024, in Jesus' name. Prayer meeting. This Monday, tomorrow, we'll have a prayer for families and a special prayer walk around Tory. Time is 7 p.m. Starts Point Church Auditorium. Everyone is encouraged to attend. Pray until something happens. Abadin Invasion 2024. Destiny Recovery Prayer Conference, hosted by Pastor Faith Urike. Team. Restore and Recover Hall was on 30th of March by 5 to 6.30 at the church auditorium. Prayer for children with autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, and any other form of mental illness will be prayed for. Please come expectant and invite someone. And I pray God will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. You also note that today we have not seen our pastor in church today. He has sent a message to us to tell us why he's not available in the church.
He said, I wear some signs for you for a great conference yesterday. God bless you all that attended yesterday's program. It was very, very gracious. And we pray we'll continue to have more testimony and progresses in our life in Jesus' name. He said, I'm with our Sterling Church today. They just bought their church uh, building. God is doing an amazing thing. So he's telling us to have a very blessed and glorious service today. And I pray very soon we shall also move to ours in Jesus' name. And other people will also come to celebrate with us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. That was an amazing testimony. Um, we, in the spirit of testimonies, we have one more testifier. And uh, if the media team could help. So the testimony goes thus. I want to thank the almighty God for his mercy and love to me and my family. I bless God for success in my placements, observation, and the continuous favor he has enveloped me with. Last Sunday after service, I was about to leave the church and the pastor called me. And when I got to where he was, he said, I just wanted to tell you that all will be well. I said, amen. That same week on Tuesday, all went well as pastor prophesied. I passed excellently beyond my imagination, hallelujah, for placing helpers for me. Before I get to each stage of my life, I return all the glory, honor, and adoration to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And that's from our sister, Blessing. Hallelujah. Let us just put our, bow down our head, heads for a minute and just bless God for those testimonies we've heard. You know, the Sterling Church uh, building purchase and the um, testimony from our sister, for the excellent result in our exam. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. And let us also say a word of prayer for ourselves. Anyone that is, you know, looking up to God, either for a building purchase, whether it's for a success in the exam, just tap into this and say, God, you did it for our sister. You did it for your church. Father, do it for me as well in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. It's time for our tithes and offerings. It's time for our tithes and offerings. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 7, the New Living Translation. If you have your tithes and your offerings, there are envelopes in the church uh, it's with a black inscription, either on the seats in front of you or on your actual seats, please use the envelope and start um, try to populate all the information on there while I read this scripture. From Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 7. It says, When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift and the best portion of his firstborn lambs for, uh, from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel's gift, uh, Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and look dejected. Why are you angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so de dejected? And we, you, will, you will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be his master. May the Lord bless the reading of the word in Jesus' name. This scripture is telling us that we as children of God know what is right, and we are to do what is right. I know that most of us, if not all of us, have heard about Titan before, so I'm not going to go into that, but I want this scripture to resonate in you. Just like Abel did here, he gave the best portion as a tithe, as a gift to God. So it is time for our tithe. So if you have filled your envelope, please rise as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your children that has done what is right. And I've brought this before you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, just like you accepted Abel's sacrifice, we pray you accept their sacrifice in the name of Jesus. We pray you open the windows of heaven and pour out upon them a blessing that they will not have enough room to contain 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please joyfully cast your tithes. So it's time for our offerings. And I will just encourage us from First, uh, First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 24. We're not reading that, so don't worry. But basically, it's about the widow of Zarephath and the fact that she had just very little in the house. And she decided to give sacrificially even to the man of God. And the Bible said in that, in that uh, passage that the oil did not fail. Hallelujah. So I want us, with all the scriptures we've heard this morning, to give our offerings in, this, in that same spirit that God, I'm giving sacrificially to you. Father, my oil will not fail. My flour will not fail. In the name of Jesus, I will not lack anything good. Let's bow down our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we commit our gifts to you. And we say, Lord Jesus, accept it in the name of Jesus. This offering, we're bringing this offering out of the abundance you've already given us. Father, we pray that our jar of oil will not fail. Our jar of flour will not fail. We will take money out of money in the name of Jesus. We will not lack anything good in the name of Jesus. You shall accept this from us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the choir. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, we've come to minister to the King of Heaven this afternoon. I'll be blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen.
Kutuyor musun? Victory belongs to Jesus Victory belongs to him Come on now, let's join me and sing one more time Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Indeed, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs only to him. Yeah, welcome to our family Sunday this afternoon. And today we're going to be talking about navigating and managing family finances. Yesterday was our empowerment day, the way up, and today... This is another topic as a method of empowerment as well. You know, money is a very important deal. In every relationship, every business, money is very important. So we're going to be talking about family finances. We're going to be talking about how do we navigate it? How do we manage it in our marital relationships in our lives? This is very interesting. And I have a very seasoned member of the team to join me today to talk about this particular topic of money. First on my list is our amicable Dr. Choma Onoshakbo. Thank you very much. And I have Dikin Abiodu Olowarere. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, because we want the light drivers to be part of it, we also want them to prepare for these important topics when they actually get married. So joining us in the panel today, we have Angel Kosi. <laughs> Thank you very much. And finally, a very important man that I like so much, he knows. Mr. Koride Agbaje Amapiano. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with, you know, several questions. And please feel free to join us if you have any questions for the panel. We'll take first set of questions. And of course, you can chime in with any question that you have. So we're going to go straight right into it. Remember, our topic is managing and navigating family finances. Money, money, money. So my first question will be to Dr. Choma. Dr. Choma, how are you today? I'm fine. Oh, thank you very much. Right. So my first question for you is, having a joint account, is it beneficial for the family? Having a joint account. Okay. So um, the Bible says that can two work together except they are different. So from that Bible verse, we can say that the answer to your, the straight answer to your question is that we need joint finance. Uh, joint finance arrangements in our homes. So that can happen in various forms. It can be a joint account where both of you put money into, but it can be a joint arrangement. So some people use ISA, some people use different forms. So I personally, uh, in my family, we don't have a joint account, but because it doesn't work. But we have a joint financial arrangement, a joint financial structure in the home which maybe later I will, I will get to explain that works. But yes, it has to be that joint uh, financial commitment um, to the home. Okay, thank you very much. Of course, joint finances is very important because as a family, you have to plan your finances together. Now, why, whether you want to do that in a joint account, that's something that you have to discuss as a couple, as a family. But the most important take home here is that as a family, you should plan your finances together. That's the only way we can go up in our families, right? Okay, nice. So I'm going to go to Brother Corridy. Now, for a mature single like you, are you, are you, are you searching? <laughs> are, you, are you single or searching? <laughs> right, so as a single, how do you position yourself not to be a burden, a financial burden to your future spouse? Are there things that you can start doing now? Because as singles, you have a lot of freedom with your money. You know, I remember when I was single, so many things that I used to do then, 
I thought I could do it now, but it's a different ball game. So how do you position yourself so you are not a financial burden on your spouse? Okay. Very good question. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, as matured singles, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you have to become financially responsible and uh, you have to build um, LD um, financial habits uh, as a single person uh, looking forward to marriage. And, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll quote from the scripture, uh, Jesus was telling a crowd in uh, Luke 14, 28, he said, uh, which one of you um, intending to build a tower? doesn't sit down first Absolutely. and count yeah. his costs yeah. so that you know if you have sufficient <laughs> funds for it. So yeah. um, uh, as a single person I'm um, intending to get married, you must become financially responsible. You don't want to be a burden yeah. to your future spouse. And I think the first step to that is uh, becoming a financial uh, literate, mm -hmm. so to speak. So you have to um, yeah. be educated financially. And um, it's sad that a lot of our school um, our syllabus and curriculum don't talk about finances. But you personally, because of you know, what you want to become. You have to um, learn to build um, good financial habits. And that starts from things like learning um, about budgeting, saving, um, investing, insurance, and all those. So you have to become a financial literate. Uh, one other thing I will mention is that you have uh, to um, set goals, yeah, financial absolutely. goals, yeah. short-term goals, um, uh, long-term goals, medium-term goals. So uh, I want to buy a house. The house is not just going to, Rishi Sunak will not just come and drop a house for me. Yeah, you understand? So yeah. you have to set yeah. goals. So these are the things yeah. you have to start building as a matured single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you very much. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah some, something I, I got from you is, as, you know, as single people, you have to be financially literate. And you don't want to be a burden on your spouse. Because there's nothing stopping you as a single girl. Your husband is looking for maybe an investment. This, pr this particular investment um, deal is going to lead you guys maybe 10 million pounds. And what he needs to complete his money is like 1 million. And you say, oh, babe, I have 1 million. How beautiful is that? You know, and it goes both ways as well. So I'm not just putting that burden on just the ladies as well. Right. So Dick in the lower area, are you ready for me? Oh, nice. Good. So what is the role of transparency in family finances? Are you very confident and transparent in discussing your financial um, situation with your spouse? And in terms of financial situation, even when things are not going well or when things are going well, what's the role of transparency in that? Well, um, like Dr. Chioma said earlier, um, Amos 3.3, uh, how can two work together except they be agreed? So, transparency is essential. Um, it's it's non-negotiable because your spouse needs to know that the future is secure somehow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every woman wants some form of assurance that if anything happens to you, um, at least they have something to fall back on. So, transparency you cannot negotiate, and um, honesty, yeah. of course. Um, personally, um, okay, maybe I shouldn't go that, that way, <laughs> but personally, I am as transparent as possible. My, my wife yeah. has access to my accounts. Wow. If need be, she can that's, access it. That's yeah. beautiful. Wow, well done. So I think that's about it. Well, well done. Thank you very much. So of course, what, what you have said that we can take home from it is you have to be financially transparent with your spouse. Um, please, just to let you know that the mics will be going around shortly. If you have questions, you can also write it down, and I know that they will be more than happy to answer your questions. So thank you very much for that financial um, you know, information that you have given us with transparency. And I know a couple of days ago, my husband and I were talking about knowing who you are getting married to financially. Because think about it, if you marry a gambler or somebody who used to go to casino and do bets one, bet two, and you have a joint account with such a person, it will simply mean that every single money that you are saving is, is gone. So this finances that we're talking about is a very, is due diligence that you have to, you know, take, take into, um, con uh, you know, into perception. So I'll move on to Angel. So um, how do you prioritize your finances as a single? And I'm asking you this question, no shade, right? Because I know we are ladies, we love beautiful things, and trust me, I'm an emblem of that. I know, like, I like beautiful things, you know? And, but when you get married, it's like, you buy a shoe, and if you're married to my man, he's going to ask you, 
why do you need a shoe? You have black shoe already. So why do you need another one? You know, so it can be, it, it can cause a lot of friction when I tell him, well, this is stiletto, baby. I want block heel. And he doesn't get it, you know? So as, as a single girl, how do you prioritize your finances as a single girl, knowing where to spend your money? You know, how do you, do you have dependents? Do you have siblings? How do you put, where do you put your money basically as a single person? Thank you for that question. Um, as a single person without, I don't have dependents, but I'm going to, I'm not just going to answer the question based on my own personal experience, just generally to help youths and young adults, adults like myself. We're earning, right? We don't have, many of us don't have responsibilities. Um, I think it's wise enough that you budget your money wisely. Um, some of the things that have worked out, I have done it and I got this not from myself, but from someone else who is a financial literate. When you get your money, there's a 60%, 20% and 20%. So uh -huh. you're basically dividing the 100% of your income. 60% goes to priorities, your rent, your transport, feeding and every other thing. The other 20% can go to your wants, your needs. I mean, you work hard, you should enjoy yourself. You don't know what tomorrow Absolutely. entails. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other 20% can be into savings and investments. It's also wise to divide the other 20% into a 15% and a 5%. 15% wow. into savings and investments. Oh, wow. 5% into... Please, a round of applause for that breakdown. Yes. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Very, um, very, like... The 5%, girl. I would say emergency, but at the same time, um, my brother calls it vex money. Anything can happen. Where do you pull out money from? Um, <laughs> concerning families and siblings, we... We as individuals always pray that um, God should raise an army of men that is like an army of God to help us in our trying times. But you yourself, do you ever want to be that kind of person to another person? But irrespective of that, also before you help someone, also think about your own financial stability. The yeah, person who doesn't you. have comes to you to request, but are you going to help that person at the expense of your own financial issues so if you help are you then going to be like that person where you now have to go to ask another person for help so you have to weigh your options and prioritize when it comes to family there should always be that part of your finance that you alone has full access to i mean i don't buy the idea i'm single i don't have a spouse so why should another person know my whole income everything about my finance sorry but it's none of your business oh wow okay but that will pretty much change when you get married, right? Till then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause for Angel. That was absolutely beautiful. And remember, questions are going around. The mics will go around as well. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Now, I'm going to take this question to another level, Dr. Choma, because there's this popular saying, his money, my money. and my money. My money. Aha. Uh -huh. So, how do you, is this, is this reality or is this a myth? You know, how, what, what is the role specifically of a woman financially in a home? And I think I would appreciate it more if you tailor it down to an environment like the United Kingdom where we are as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that question. So, um, I will, you know, the question you know, very popular question they ask you, what do you bring to the table? They ask women, what do you bring to the table? Now, if you have that idea of your money is our money and my own money is my money, then that kind of question will annoy you. Why, why are you asking me what are you bringing to the table? Our money is our money. So your money has to be brought to the table as a woman. Your job, <laughs> your, your job is not just to have children. I'm sorry to say, because chickens can have children. Oh, wow. That is not <laughs> your... Now, I'm not undermining the fact of childbearing. No, I've got three kids. But you are much more than having children. And, I mean, the man is the head of the home, so he should bring more. So in my family, we do 60%, 40%. I bring 40%. 
and he brings 60 percent and that's because i will not do 50 50 not because i can't but because you are the head of the home so that 10 percent gap must be there in fact recently our total budget when we now split i got into 41 and i phone him up i say guy <laughs> spreadsheet because we have a spreadsheet I say, guy, this spreadsheet, I'm now tilting to 41%. I cannot do 1%. And he say, ah, it's 1% that you're using to shout. <laughs> if people hear that you're arguing over 1%. But, so I will just share with you our financial structure. At the beginning of every year, we have a, a meeting, financial meeting, where there's a big spreadsheet. Everything that we spend on a monthly basis goes there. And then we have a total money that leaves our account on the monthly, and then we split 60-40. I bring forth. So we don't have a joint account, but he sends me the 60%, which is part of his res financial responsibility for the home, and I make up the 40%. Now, in three months' time, and that also, that also protects our financial situation, because I can't just go out and see something and I now want to add. No. Yeah. You will call him, oh, there's something I want to add to our monthly expenditure. Now, when you add that to the monthly expenditure, you, you will feel it because your own 40% too yeah. will go up. Mm. So you can bring bill of uh, uh, oh, should, uh, one club that we join, family re uh, recreational club of 500 pounds a month. Okay, now add it to that monthly income and you will feel the 40 percent wow thank you so much doctor <laughs> thank you very much thank you that is very very um, you know it's very very expository in terms of as a woman we are not just child bearers there's so much more that we can do and i think that's that's very true because me personally I don't always feel comfortable if I'm just sitting down and not even doing anything or making any improvement to my home. You know, because even the Bible says that too, we chase, you know, 10,000. So how would you chase if you are not bringing anything to the table? So thank you very much. Now I have a question here, just so that the audience feel like we are here for them because we are indeed. So the question is, my wife and I are relatively new to the UK. She doesn't want to do odd jobs as she thinks it is beneath her. How do I manage this? It is affecting our family finances. Um, I'll, I'll give this question to Dikin um, Oluwerere because he's a man like you, so maybe you can advise him from a male perspective. And of course, we would give a mic to one or two people in the audience um, who would want to chime in as well. Right. All right. Um, I will speak from my own experience. Back home, I had an engineering job, and when we were to come here, I knew it may not be easy to get the kind of job I wanted. So I had prepared my mind, we had discussed this anyway, me and my wife, that what if it's security you get to do? My wife personally doesn't like me to do that kind of job because she feels... <laughs> how can I say my husband is a security man after any big money in Nigeria? Come here and come and be doing security. But I was willing to do that, uh, go through that for, for the sake of feeding my family. So in this person's case, I don't know if he's a student and the wife is a dependent. But in our own case, we agreed that my wife should be the student because as a student, you can't do more than 20 hours. Then I the man I can do 50 or more. I was willing, ready to do that, even working as a cleaner or kitchen staff. Because I, I, by the grace of God, I felt it was going to be temporary. It's not going to be what I'll do forever. Just while I'm waiting for the kind of job I'm looking for. A lot of people, Pastor Dapo, I said it here before, he did similar jobs. I, I think Pastor 22 said something like that. So, I don't think any job is beneath you. I don't think so because it's a service you are rendering. Yeah. And um, some, uh, I heard in the news recently our first lady back home in Nigeria said a lot of people leave Nigeria to come and drive taxis abroad yeah. Yeah, and they that. feel it's, a, it's um, demeaning or belittling them. But anything, you know, 
there's a reward for your labor. You are getting paid for a service you are rendering. If you calculate what some of these people make, they may be earning more than someone like me that works nine to five. So at the end of the day, you are solving a, a financial need for your family. So my advice to that sister is please just look at it as a temporary situation. By God's grace, it will not be what you will do for long. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, that's very good. Um, can we have, does anybody, okay, can you give the mic to uh, Dickin Frank, please? Oh, there's somebody with the mic already. Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To add to it is that the uh, Bible says that whatsoever you find yourself to do, do it well. So from the position of whatever you, you are before is what you carry inside you. What if you clean a floor and you clean it like you are, you are tiring a decent, what someone who can see you and ask you that, uh, what this, who are you that you are doing this stuff like this? So from there you can even introduce yourself. So it's not about what is inside you that you are proud of. It's what you can expose to people to see that is what this person is actually is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So forget Thank about you where much, you're sir. coming from, where you are, where you, because this place is not like that. You know, I've seen a counselor, you know, which is Nigeria. Small counselor, I mean, I know my mates that are nothing. They cannot do what that counselor was doing. And he was walking on the street where we were walking, and he was, you know, picking these... Um, Liters on the floor, yeah. So I was just admiring the glass that she's wearing. So now I have to me that I'm the counselor of this place. Yeah. That taught well, me something. So thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so in summary, it, there's no job that is beneath you. Every job you do here, and remember that Nigeria is not the United Kingdom. It's a different ball game. Dickin Frank, please. I think uh, what I want to say is what you have said, and just not to belabor us. I will just advise the person, like the event we had yesterday. If you remember, one of the, I think it's Mrs. Timmy that mentioned that as well, that she started from even doing what we call little jobs. What he has said, there is a, a life testimony that I had of someone cleaning in Primark in Aberdeen. Mm. And because the guy was very diligent at what, he, what he's doing, a customer has been noticing him. And one day, the customer approached him that, I like the way you do your work with all your heart and stuff like that. Who are you? And the person said, ah, I'm actually a graduate of University of Aberdeen and so, so, and so. Wow. To cut the long story short, the guy got a job through that connect. So wow. whatever yeah. we find ourselves, if it is cleaning, if it is uh, uh, security, any job at all, I started as a support worker in this land. Wow. So you don't know where you will get to. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I think, you know, a, um, a lot of us, when we come from home here, we forget that some of the skills that you learn, they're actually transferable. You know, I, I, when I have an opportunity to speak about that, I always say that when I came into the UK in 2019 again to do my PhD, I did care. I did it for four years, straight up. And I never took it as, in fact, sometimes I used to tell my husband jokingly that this 9 to 5 work or more is stressful for me. Maybe I should just go back to care. Where I would just, hello, do you want tea? Do you want coffee? Hey! And I would just move on. But this one, you have to send email. You read the email. Make sure your tea is like, oh my goodness. But the job that I'm doing now, part of the, the transferable skills were what I got from care. You know, so there's no job that is beneath you. Thank you very much. And I think we'll just move it further to um, the, another question that I have here. And it says, what financial considerations should be made in order to come up with a financial plan for the family. So, um, Dr. Choma, do you want to help us there? And of course, I'll give the singles some opportunities to project into your family. So what financial considerations should be made? And I think what, what, we, what we are driving at with this question is, you know, what do you, put, what, what do you look at? Because you, you said something about, you know, how your family does it, 60-40. So is, is, how did you guys reach to that um, calculation? Okay. So, um, so we started from me bringing 10% because then my income was not a lot. So what do you consider when arranging or putting together a financial arrangement is income. You know the wife's income and the man's income. So that's transparency also comes in. So if your income, the wife's income is not a lot, 
you can't tell how to bring 40%. But as you begin to grow and climb up the ladder, then that now begins to shift. So you consider the income and then also consider what number of children, um, all of that comes into play uh, when you're putting together that um, budget, financial budget uh, for the home. But transparency must be there and you as the woman be willing to also increase your contribution because trust me, the discussion is different when you're contributing to the home financially. It's different, you know, and you feel part of, you, you feel part of something really amazing when you can, contribute, you can, you can yeah. contribute, yeah. you can work and, you know, you, you see the, the family growing, you know, partnering with your husband to build an empire is so amazing. Thank you very much, Dr. Choma. I think that's, that's, that's very, very good. And it, it, a lot of that transparency and financial plan, it also comes from unlearning some mindset that we have from where we are coming from. You know, when we have these conversations, you see like a Nigerian lady coming here and all of a sudden she's thrown with that um, task to start contributing, pay this, pay that. Whereas in Nigeria, she was a princess. Yeah. Everything. So in that way, you know, it's, and, and, it, and it, I, I think it, it also depends on how that communication is also landed to her to say, look, we're no longer where we used to be. So life in the United Kingdom is different, you know, and we, we need a mindset shift for our finances to grow in this country. Okay. Um, so I have a question for my lovely singles. <laughs> yeah. So as a young professional, um, Corrida, you are a young professional as well as Angel as well. So what are some of the things to look out for financially in your spouse outside praying? Outside. Praying. So praying is one part. So in typical, we're dealing with finances. Okay. And if you marry somebody who is very prudent and you're not a prudent person, what do you look out? Or if you are somebody who likes to spend and, you know, every day for himself. Tomorrow, God, you know, manna is in heaven. How do you, what are you going to use to gauge that when you are choosing your spouse? Okay, um, thank you for the question. So, uh, personally, yeah, so um, I would want uh, my to be spouse, future wife, to be um, financially literate, right? I want to see how she can create a budget and stick to her budget. Wow. I want to see her uh, managing her debt, right? Uh, I, uh, I profit um, debt. You don't. You don't bring Bessie to our future house. <laughs> in summary, yeah. So I don't want to marry an only Bessie as it is. Yeah. So I, I, and I think um, uh, they've all said is um, can two work together except they agree. Uh, it stems from communication. Know who you are going to marry. Know who you are. So it doesn't have to start from me. I'm having to paint uh, the blank canvas from the start. I should see um, the traits in the person that this person is already managing her finances by herself. She's taking charge by herself, and then we can discuss it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll just quickly go to Angel, and then we'll take a comment from the congregation. Um, I think we as singles and youths, we are quick to say, oh, I want my future spouse to always, I want this person to have a car, you have to have so and so, you have to be doing this, but you yourself, what you are you doing? Mm -hmm. If you, if after saying everything you want your partner to have, are you equally doing the same thing? Do you think the person you want to be with, equally wants to be with you? Are you going to be a burden to that person? Um, during your courtship or dating stage, do you just go for date nights? Or do you buy books? Do you attend the empowerment program that the church holds? Do you follow people on the internet that are financially wise? to help build yourself and gain financial knowledge concerning you know, finances and everything. And something else is sometimes some of us do have parents that were not financially wise. Do you want to continue in that line? Do you want your children to be the same thing or suffer from the same thing that you suffered? And even if you say you don't want to have kids, for the younger generation, don't you want to be an example? Don't you want to 
make the church or the Christian don't per se be, say, oh, in this church, there are sister and so people that can raise this amount. There are people doing well in their various career paths and everything. So thank you very I think much. that's something we should all Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So looking at your partner to make sure that they are in the same financial mindset with you, I think it would help. It would solve a lot of problems when you get into the home. Thank you very much. So um, there is a question here. Or do we have any... But in the congregation, okay, thank you. So there's a question here, and it says, in the, in the situation whereby the wife's finances is more than the husband's, and the husband wants you to drop the job and be a housewife, what do you do? So I'll give Pastor, Pastor Tony to, to take that question. So Pastor Tony would help us to, to deliver that, that message. Thank you. That's a difficult one to answer. <laughs> yeah. But I think maybe I should ask that um, why, you know, because there must be a reason. So why is the guy saying the wife should drop the job? So to be sincere, there could be many reasons. And until those reasons are, not, uh, are put on the table, we'll just be going around in a circle. I could, Im I could assume that the reason is the guy is feeling intimidated, that's an assumption, but it might not be the reality. So, and uh, he feels threatened, and that's why, okay, he feels, if you drop that job, you will not, obviously, you will not be doing younger, or, you know, I'll still be able to maintain my you know, position as the head of the home. So that is all I can think about at the moment. So it's good when, you know, when we put questions, please let's put the reason so that it can help us to advise you or counsel you better, because to me it's an assumption. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, while you're assistant, this question is also good for your office. And, and it, it all, because you mentioned intimidation, and it said, I think my husband is intimidated by my income. What do I do to reduce his insecurity around finances? Okay. I think the first thing is check yourself. How are you behaving? You know, because sometimes you might, unconsciously, you might. Uh, be behaving somehow, you know, that makes your husband to feel maybe less inferior to you because of your finances. And I think also, um, it's, let's, let's discuss, discuss. It's good for you to discuss with him that I noticed this, what is happening. And give him that assurance that, you know, even though you are earning financially more than him, God, you believe in him, and you believe in his future, that God is going to turn things around. Because men want to be, they need that assurance that no matter what the case is, you will still be who God says you are to them. Yes. So I think conversation is really matters as well, and the way you carry yourself. I hope. Yeah, That's thank okay. you very much. Yes. Um, so, okay, the, there's a clarification. So the first question about the wife not wanting to walk is from the husband. And I'm guessing the husband is asking for what to do in this situation. Okay, so I think that was what um, Dikinoloa said, that the husband should, you know, kind of speak to the wife. And you are, if you are the wife as well, you should realize that there's no job that is beneath you. So I have a question for the panelists here, um, Dikin Oluwarere and Dr. Choma. And it says, how do you manage or share financial responsibilities without disagreement? All right, um, so I, I would like to speak from my own experience. Now, my wife earns quite little because she was a student and she couldn't work. Sometimes she could only get, say, 16 hours a week. In a month, she probably earns, you can tell from that, maybe less than 600 pounds. And now, I think right from when we were back home, we already decided that the majority of the burden would be upon me. So, and I think as a man, you want to be the provider for your family. It's just basic, you know. Back then, even women were just supposed to be at home. You go out and even in the era of the cavemen, you go and hunt, bring the food home, they prepare and feed the children. Uh, so. I think it shouldn't be a big issue for men to understand that you should carry majority of the burden as long as you earn more, of course. 
So, um, like Dr. Choma said, uh, a 60 40 arrangement is good, but like she also said, depending on how much the woman is earning. But basically, it, comes, it boils down to first agreement from, the, from inception. The husband and the wife should just, they need to agree this thing. There's, yeah. there's no two ways Agreement about it. Agreement is very there's important no here, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah. let me just round up by saying that um, the issue of uh, your money, our money, uh, like we know that it has to, we have to tone it down, even if you still have that mindset, but tone it down a little. Just understand that you are investing in your, in your family. Family, Because yeah. there could be setback. What if the husband loses his job? God forbid. Mm. You know, they just have to work out things. Well, thank right you here. very much. Thank you. Well, we've run out of time, so I'll just leave the panelists to give us one last word. So if you're going to advise anyone that is listening to you right now about how do I manage and navigate my family finances without disagreement, what would you say to them? Just one line. So disagree to agree. Okay, thank because you. Because you will disagree. Because uh, somebody will be more, you know, um, ambitious in spending, while another person may be more, you know, um, restrictive. So you will disagree, but you will not agree and, uh, and get to a point. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Dikinolori. Well, I would say... Uh, sorry, the question again. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I, I, my, my thoughts were... Just a, a, a one line of advice to anybody who is listening to you to say, how do I manage my finances in my family so I don't have any disagreement? What would you say to them? I, I, I would say, whatever you spend or whatever you contribute to your family is, you know, it's for your family. It's not an outsider that is benefiting from it. So... It, uh, it's, it's not going, you are not wasting it. You are spending okay. it on someone you love. Thank you, you know, very much. Basically. You are not wasting it, you are spending it on people you love. And for my lady, what would you tell your friends about yes. managing finances? I, I don't have family. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what I would just leave for the youth is um, Proverbs 21 verse 20. It says, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend what, whatever they get. So budget and be wise when you're spending your money. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm a piano. A corridor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, for the matured singles, uh, I think um, it's... He's not going to forgive <laughs> me for that word today. <laughs> so uh, I think um, you're at the stage where you need to start getting serious about life. Wow. setting financial goals and i mean don't wait for your spouse right start building those um healthy financial habits right from now thank you very much because your spouse is not your financial plan a round of applause for our wonderful panelists thank you very much thank you so much and um, i have a question here but i'll pass it to um, pastor Tony. so when she's giving her um exhortation she might address it as well thank you very much and i hope you're able to find one or two things about managing your finances god bless you Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. And thank you so much for all the panelists. Please, can we just appreciate them once again? Amen and amen. Um, I'll quickly round up um, the talk show. Okay, maybe like, let me start with this question. How do you manage finance when the children demand things outside your monthly budget? Then the second says, do you buy everything they demand or limit their demand and work within your budget? Okay. I think one of the things I've written down, obviously I didn't see the question, is that have boundaries in your finances. Stick to the budgets that you have both set. And it's always good in your budget to make room for miscellaneous because anything can come up. So if you say, this is the way I've done it from January, you know, this is the way it's going to be, we are just deceiving ourselves. A lot of things could come up. God forbid, nobody's planning for death, you know, nobody's planning for emergencies, but we must make room for emergencies if they have, uh, if, if obviously, if they occur. So please, um, 
when children demand things outside your monthly budget, if it's something that is not going to affect the budget drastically, then you could if it is, the demand is reasonable, right? My last daughter, she demands a lot. <laughs> Honestly, you know, the day she got to know about Timu or Temu or whatever it is, <laughs> she, she will open the pages and be asking me to buy this, to buy that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Number one, the sites are even showing me. I don't trust them, whether they are good products or whatever. You know, but she just likes it. But I have a way of, you know, you know, just maneuvering it. It's not because I can't afford it, but because I have to teach her that it's not everything that you see that you must have. So, so please, you must balance out. And there's sometimes, obviously, I'll tell her, go to Amazon. I can trust Amazon better than what, you know, go and check Amazon. Let's compare. Then I'll buy it. And that is it because, you know, you just have to let them know that you work for these things as well. It's not, it's not rocket science. And that's why she said, mommy, I'll start knitting so that I can make money and uh, buy my things. So that is good. So I think I've been able to do that to answer those two questions. Do you buy everything? So you don't buy everything. If it's, if it's not meaningful, you don't buy it. If it's because they've seen their friends, that's why they are, you know, speak to them. Speak to them. And I always say that if I had carried, you know, if I had taken a Range Rover, because I see people driving Range Rover, your sister wouldn't have been able to go to a private school because I pay school fees as well. So let them know that there are some things that you, mm, are not for now. They could be suspended for the future. God bless us for that in Jesus' name. So I'll quickly go to my roundup. I've got uh, five minutes left. I said from, uh, if you can project Proverbs 31, 10 to 22, although the scripture is talking about women, and I think I want to address women this afternoon because uh, the, mind, the mentality that we have concerning finances. Amen. Please, if you can go to Proverbs 31, you see that from right from verse 10 to, you know, uh, 10 to 22, it's talking about all the things that the woman can do or should be doing or is doing. And you can see that it is only a woman that is financially empowered that can do this. You know, if you're not financially empowered, there is no way you can go out and be doing merchandise. There is no way you can be buying, you know, land out of the profits that you've made. So it's important that we as women, we must want to be financially empowered. And the scripture made it very clear that out of the things that she's making, she's catering for her household. So which means... It is not my money, it's my money. It is the money, is for the family. You get what I'm saying? Inasmuch as you might not have um, joint accounts, it is not compulsory. And the reason I'm saying it's not compulsory is that I've had to deal with cases where the man has been insisting that the woman must do joint accounts. Where is it in the Bible? And that is it. But you must understand your spouse, right? And you must both agree how you want to meet the financial responsibilities of the house, respective of how you want to do it. Please, Sister uh, Dr. Choma mentioned that she does something, but they don't have a joint account. But it is an understanding. In fact, the man is the one transferring to her, not the woman transferring to the husband. To maintain peace, to be able to navigate and manage the family finances, conversations must be held. And I said the place of trust, integrity and transparency in finance cannot be overlooked. It cannot. Because if, you have, if, if, you, if they give you 100 pounds to do something, and the next day they said, okay, ah, madam, you've not bought the, the stuff. And you are saying, and you are now saying Jack and Bull story. The man will not be, you know, will not be moved to give you three hundred pounds the next time. So you, there must be a place of transparency, trust, and integrity, even as we deal with our finances. The Bible says in Proverbs twenty two twenty nine, it says, "See, thou a man that is diligent in his business, he said he shall stand before kings and not mean men." 
So see that business. That see thou a man that is no that, no that diligence. Say, see thou a man that is trustworthy with his finances. See it as a man that is transparent in his finances. Such a man will do what will be able to gain the confidence of his spouse. I have no reason if my husband says, bring, you know, uh, madam, this and this. I have no reason to, to doubt him. Because I know he would never mismanage my money. That is it. And many of you know that if your, your, your pastor, <laughs> let me just leave it to that. When it comes to financial matters, in fact, I don't like the fact that he read financial management. <laughs> so it's even make him to you know made him to be more you know to talk with finances and that's you know it's good because it's not a waster so please let's bear that in mind less friction we experience less friction when everybody has a financial stake in the home you are all do you are all what you are all you know stakeholders so it's not somebody's uh, work to bring money and the other person to just be painting nails you know cruising around while the man is just suffering. Or the other way around, because I now know that, you know, this is set, no set of people that have just entered into, our, you know, into UK. It's like they have now changed. Instead of, you know, they are now behaving like the women. Now they will, they will say, that, you know, they're just all manner of things. You'll be wondering that what is happening. Please, let us fear God and do things rightly. You must be an investor. Invest before pleasure. Invest before what? Pleasure. Invest before pleasure. So it's not all the money that needs to go into spend, into expenses, but you must invest before pleasure. Don't cut your coat according to your size, but according to your, your cloth. What did I say? According to your what? According to your material or according to your cloth. And, it, you know, because your size might be very big. Your taste might be very, very big. But if your taste is very big, <laughs> someone is looking at me. I refuse to look at that side. <laughs> Amen. And obviously, please, let's learn to help one another. Please, this, because all these little, little things are the ones that, you know, that is making, you know, the family to experience strain. And I pray that we will not express strain in our marriages in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll round up by praying for the families. You know, obviously we've heard a lot today and the Lord wants to pour out his blessings upon all the families. Hallelujah. Shall we just rise up even as we pray? Please, if you can project Numbers chapter 6, 21 to 26. Numbers chapter 6, 21 to 26. And I will we'll be reading from Amplified Version. Amplified Version. It said, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron. And his son saying, this is the way you shall bless the Israelites. Hallelujah. So before we go into the prayers, I just want us to, you know, just be in an attitude of someone that wants to receive of the Lord, from the Lord, in the name of Jesus. I therefore stand as an authority of God that the Lord will bless you. Amen. Every family represented in Jesus' house story both those that are watching online and those that are present in this auditorium, or those that are in their workplaces but they could not join. I decree that the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will protect you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God will sustain you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord Almighty will guard you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and I declare that the Lord will make his face shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, with his favor in the name of Jesus, and I pray that the Lord will be gracious to you in this land, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be gracious to every member of your family in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be gracious to you in the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be gracious to you concerning your health in the name of Jesus. The Lord will be gracious to you concerning the seeds he has given unto you in the name of Jesus. And I pray over you that the Lord will surround you with his loving kindness in the name of Jesus. 
I pray that the peace of the Lord shall be upon you in the name of Jesus. Everything that seems not to be enough right now, I pray that the Lord will take you to a place of abundance in the name of Jesus. You will not know a better yesterday in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall take you from nation to nation. He will cause men to favor you in the name of Jesus. And you will rebuke every enemy on your way in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, that the covering of the Lord shall not depart from you in the name of Jesus. Go and shine in the name of Jesus. No more struggle in the name of Jesus. No more limitation in the name of Jesus. No more rejection in the name of Jesus. I decree every confused soul right now begin to gain clarity in the name of Jesus. Begin to gain the hope of the Lord in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your children. I pray, Lord Almighty, that they shall return back, O oh God, with testimonies of your wonderful works in the name of Jesus. And above all, O oh God, I pray, make their stay in this land a memorable one in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen and amen. I will invite Pastor Uriki. God bless you. Hallelujah. I believe we've all enjoyed the service so far. God bless our panelists. That was amazing. God bless the team that organized it as well. Hallelujah. So um, next thing today's service, as we wrap up, just to encourage us to engage in the Let's Go Out Fishing. If you've heard about Let's Go Out Fishing, hands up, please. You see the videos, the pictures coming on the screen? That was last week, Saturday. We were out on the streets, and the people were like, appreciating it that we brought the church to the streets. So the harvest is ready, but we, the laborers, we're not few at the moment. There are a lot of us, but we're not willing. <laughs> so please, let's be willing. The, book, the Bible in Isaiah 119 says, the willing and if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You want to be established in this land. This is a key. If you take it, it will work for you. If it works for me, it will work for you. No one can root you out of this land. If you make yourself, position yourself, make yourself available for the master's business. Jesus has said we should go and win souls. Our father in the Lord, Pastor Ia Deboe, has said, let's go and fishing should happen in the UK, Easter and December, Christmas. What are you doing to align? So this is a call. I'm just one cent to encourage us today. Please let's engage, be willing, and be obedient. Time is fast running out. See, there's no time again. Rapture is around the corner. It's nearer than when we first believed. The devil is working over time, but God is greater. If we can partner with God, we will overtake. So are you willing to partner? Can we have the, um, thanks so much media, can we have the flyer on the screen? The flyer is going to come up. The QR code is there. This week, Saturday, we're out again. Union Street and... Tory, choose where you want to go. You don't have to be in both places. Just decide which one works for you. Fill the, uh, scan the QR code, please. As we are speaking, can we please bring our phones, permission to bring your phone out now. Not post picture, scan code, and fill the form. God is watching you, me, I'm monitoring the back end from here. To see how many people are complying with what the Lord has brought our way. I'm laughing about it, but it's a serious business. This Business is more serious to buy my own business I do. And because I take this one seriously, my own has not failed. So please, let's engage with this. Scan the code, 30th of March, Saturday, Tory Community or City Center. Choose your preferred location and be ready to go out for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that God will bless you. And this word, this word, hold this word. This word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. And I would like to welcome the new first-timers, first-timers in the house. Any first-timers in the house today? Hands up, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you. Please, just our story members, can we say hello to her? Can we welcome her? We're happy to have you here. We love you. God bless you. I believe you've been blessed today. And I believe greater blessings await you this week. The Lord will give you an encounter that will cause you to know 
that you've come to a home in the name of Jesus. You have come to the place where the Lord will meet you at the very point of your needs. You receive a special testimony this week to the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We've got our brother behind, very young, handsome brother and his team, and he's ready to welcome you into the family of God. Hallelujah. I, I didn't see much phones come up. Please. God is watching and I'm monitoring from here, like I said earlier. Please, can we bring our phones out and engage with this, with this um, um, link? God bless all the first um, service people that engaged. I saw the impact. So let's keep it going. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the people are ready. The hearts are ready. But we need to go and sow the seed of the gospel of Christ to the hearts of people. And I know that God will bless you as you obey in Jesus' name. Just a minute, I'll see where we are with the list, and we're going to round up the service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Right, let's see what happens. Brethren, brethren, brethren. Brethren, receive understanding in the name of Jesus. God bless those that have taken action. Your blessing is now, not later. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please, we'll be on our feet as we share the grace. God bless you. Father, we give you thanks for how you've helped us and for your blessings. Thank you for as many that will still engage with this link. Thank you because you that have kept your servant, Pastor Ia Debwe, and has strengthened him so far. You will also strengthen us. You put this passion in us to keep running for you to take your kingdom business seriously in the name of Jesus. Thank you because we know it is done. Thank you for a fruitful week ahead. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. I declare this week is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your going out is preserved in the name of Jesus. Your coming in is preserved in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will speak for you and your families, every family connected to Jesus' house story. The blood of Jesus will speak defense. It will speak exemption. It will speak preservation from all evil both by day and by night, in the name of Jesus. As I have decreed it, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, I have decreed. Amen, amen. Share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the flesh of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord now forevermore. Amen. Please, if you check our workers' platform, the open heaven has been sent there, and the open heaven says we don't have a choice. So please, let's engage with that. And the live groups, the link will go to live groups as well. Online worshipers, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Please, can all the leaders please uh, kindly uh, see me now, please? Leaders, please. All leaders. Please, all the leaders.